So it's common knowledge that the very first world record was from Mi Thai, when he went a 22.95 in the 1982 World Championships. However, to get to these World Championships, you actually had to go through several qualifying competitions first, and at these qualifying competitions, there were people that went faster than 22.95. The fastest of these was a 19 flat by Ronald Brickman in the 1982 West German Championship. One year after the World Championships in 1983, Robert Pergel won the Czech Slovakian Nationals with a world record of 17.02 seconds. An interesting thing to know about Robert is that he reportedly knew around 600 algorithms. Now these two world records are the only world records at competition that aren't considered official by the WCA. This is because the WCA only recorded that first 1982 world championships. However, I think they should be recognized and it's really just up to you whether you consider 22.95 as the world record or 17.02. Now it took 20 years for the next Cuban competition to happen. This competition was the 2003 world championships celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Rubik's Cube. The world record was broken twice at this competition. The first time was a 16.71 during the first round by Dan Knights, and the second time was a 16.53 by Jess Bond. The world record scene was then dominated by Shitaru Makasumi. Less than a year later, at Caltech Winter 2004, he went a 15.04 during the first round, and a few hours later, he improved his world record with a 14.76. In Caltech Spring, just 4 months later, he went a 13.93 in the first round, and then a 13.89 in the first solve of the third round. He then did something amazing. Just two solves later, he went at 12.11. Shotaro Makasumi single-handedly lowered the 3x3 world record by more than 4 seconds. Over the next four years, the world record would go down through steady improvement. So there was Jane Pons with an 11.75, Leyland Lowe with an 11.13, Toby Mao 10.48, Eduard Champon 10.36, Thibaut Jacquinot 9.86, and Eric at Sir. Alright, I'm not going to try to butcher these names, all you need to know is that in 2008, the world record was lowered from an 8.72 to an incredible 7.08 by... Okay, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. This is still the longest standing world record in history. It stood for 854 days until it would finally be broken by Felix Zemdegs, breaking the record with a 7.03. After Felix broke this record, he went absolutely crazy. During 2010 and 2011, he dropped this world record from a 6.77 to a 6.65 to a 6.24 to a 6.18 to finally a 5.66, which is considered one of the most iconic solves in Cuban history. After this, the world record progression was extremely slow. Felix's 5.66 stood for two years until it would finally be broken. This was by Mats Falk with a time of 5.55 in 2013. This stood for another two years until it was broken by Colin Burns with a 5.25. Nobody was sure how long this record would stand. The 3x3 single world record had been moving extremely slowly for two years. Would it be a few more years until it would be broken? It was actually only seven months for it to be broken. This day, November 21st, 2015, is still considered the craziest day in Cuban history. Basically what happened is that the world record was beaten three times by three different people in just one day. The first one being a 5.21 by Colin Burns at Manhasset Fall 2015. A few hours later, Keaton Ellis won a 5.09 at River Hill Fall 2015. And at the same competition, one round later, Lucas Eder won a 4.9, becoming the first person under 5. Now, Colin's world record ended up being a misscramble and was given a DNF. Keaton's world record was never put as an official world record because it was beaten at the same competition. Nonetheless, the fact that before this, the world record had only been beaten three times in four years and it had just been beaten three times on the same day is insane. The world record continued to steadily go down. Matt Falk with a 4.74, Felix Zemtegs with a 4.73, Patrick Pounds 4.69, Steve Cho and Felix Zemtegs both going a 4.59, and finally the 4.22, the current standing world record. It would have likely been lowered to under 4 seconds a few months later by Jay McNeil, but he tragically dropped the cube. Poor guy. <laughs> Now it's possible that this 4.22 could stand for another few years, but it could also be broken really soon. What we do know is that the Rubik's Cube world record has become faster than anyone ever thought it would be. Jessica Fidrick once said that her method could solve the cube at fastest in 13 seconds. 
It's clear that we have gone a long way.